Pleased to be joined today by Mike Shuddy, the creator and uh, maintainer of our super screener for Horse <laughs> Racing Nation. Thank you so much for joining us. Do you want to introduce yourself? Thank you, Sarah. Great to uh, be joining you here today. Uh, yes, Mike Shuddy, uh, co-founder of Horse Racing Nation and the author of The Super Screener. So uh, and I think we're going on our um, 13th year of The Super Screener. So it's uh, been quite a journey. Wow, I bet. That's very exciting. And we are both here today to discuss the mandatory payout day for the Santa Anita Rainbow Pick Six. It's a 20 cent jackpot wager. The pool is expected to be over $4 million. And they always say it's going to exceed that. They're usually right about things like that. That is going to be taking place Saturday, March 19th, which is tomorrow for us as of this recording. And you have a ticket that you put together for the sequence that we'll show later on. I don't want to give away all the secrets of who you like <laughs> just yet. But um, starting off, we have all of the surfaces included. We have the downhill turf. We have the regular dirt. We have the regular turf here. Um, pretty competitive races, I would say. I think there's definitely some opportunities to find some value within the sequence. I know there's going to be a pretty heavy favorite that a lot of people lean on in race eight, myself included. But I think that this uh, has the potential to pay pretty well. How did you uh, see the totality of the sequence? Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I think they really stacked up the race as well to make this certainly challenging. It's not going to be an easy uh, win here. Certainly a, a single ticket uh, could be possible here um, based on the fact that a couple of these races, as we get into them, we'll point them out, are pretty darn wide open. Um, and in, in, in the other case, there are probably one or two races, as you'd mentioned earlier, where a single uh, could be the um, the way to go. So um, you know, lots of strategies to apply here for this, uh, this pick six sequence. Can't wait. Yeah. All right. Well, let's start things off. Uh, we start with race number four. That's going to be a maiden special weight for California bred or California sired maidens, fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up. We are going six and a half, or sorry, just a plain six furlongs on the turf. What are your thoughts in here? Yeah. Um, boy, you know, I always start with sort of the pace setup. How's that going to uh, play out here? And in this case, it projects to be a bit faster than par with some good pressure. So, uh, it won't be easy for those horses that are on that front end. Um, I, you know, this is one of those races where if you're looking for a single, you might be able to start right here in the uh, in the very first leg of the pick six. Um, I've landed on number five, Rosy Forecast. Um, what I really like about this one is, you know, just exits a solid field. Um, there were nine, nine other runners. Um, very lightly raced. She only has that uh, debut race, but ran it so professionally. And had a little bit of trouble, actually, down the stretch if you watch the replay. She kind of collided with the four horse and uh, clipped heels a bit in the sideways fashion, not uh, in front or behind. And um, that that kind of uh, knocked her off stride for just a moment. But uh, she was very game in chasing the winner of that race. Um, I think it was Increased Stakes, who actually came back and won the next start. So that kind of bodes well for um, the second place finisher in that race. Um I think that uh, Ben Cecil, too, is quite good with uh, these types of horses coming in. Second career start. I think he's uh, clipping at 21 percent here. Um, there's, it's just so hard to find any knocks on this one. Some other horses that have run quite a bit, um, you know, kind of have proven that maybe they're not the quality that some of these lighter raced horses uh, will be uh, when they get into their next starts. Absolutely. How about you? This is a horse that I included as well. I think it's hard to look past this one. And I agree with the professionalism that she showed in her debut to kind of sit and stalk in an inside position and have to just wait for the cue and then angle out and chasing that pace setter who ended up winning the race. Like you mentioned, a pretty decent horse in there. Um, but I did look a little bit further than the five rosy forecast in here just because I felt as though, you know, I, I can't fault her for this, but it's not like she really showed a major punch in the stretch or that she had any sort of closing kick, but that was a fast race and that was her first start and I'm not going to fault her for that, but it's not like she really changed anything in the stretch to me at least. Um, I am kind of looking at the three funny feline who does come out of the same race that was post 10 in there. Um, she really pulled a lot in that start to kind of like yeah. go up after the pace setters and she was really held back. And now she's, she is getting a jockey change to, uh, John Velasquez. So maybe he can get her to settle a little bit more on the front end. 
and she is getting to break from post three instead of post 10. So maybe the opportunity to save a little bit more ground in there as well. Um, I did kind of spread in this race. I'm also looking at the number eight, the first time starter, Sugar Apple, um, who is 10 to one on the morning line. Trainer Neil, Neil Drysdale does have two in here that are first time starters. He has the two current mood who is eight to one, as well as the eight uh, who is 10 to one. But I think that this one is kind of the more live firster for him. Uh, Ryan Crotolo rides, who is 33% for him. And they have a positive ROI of $17.47 of only six starters, which I thought was really interesting. So when these two team up, they are having significant success at a price. And I think this horse is going to be a price. Um, the Sire Dancing Candy is a 15% with his turf sprinters. The Damn Love Apple did win on the turf at six and a half furlongs, earning a 76 buyer speed figure when doing so. Um, the siblings have almost exclusively run on the dirt except for one turf start. So maybe this horse could handle either surface, but I think it's interesting that they do start on the turf where she might uh, prefer that. And then I also gave a look to the number nine horse in here. Summer Pudding, who is eight to one on the morning line. I think she has every reason to improve with a surface switch. The Sire Square Eddie is 16% with his turf sprinters. The dam did hit the board four times out of 10 on the turf. Um, siblings have shown the ability to handle either surface. So looking for a little bit of value in here because I do have some chalky interests later on. I was spreading in here with the three, five, eight, and nine. I literally thought you were reading my notes <laughs> because <laughs> right below the potential single, I was going to say, if you're going to spread in this race, the three horses I added were the number eight, <laughs> Sugar Apple, for all the reasons you stated, especially between the two Drysdale first-time starters. Uh, the other thing, too, is that, um, I don't know if it was the number two horse that is his other horse uh, in here, but that one's bred to go really long. And this one is is has got all that like nice sprint breeding. We don't know about surface as much, but uh, I couldn't agree more that this one is a very viable play if you're going to spread in this first uh, leg. Uh, I also had a funny feline because she ran a very similar race to Rosie Borcast. So if uh, you know uh, tracked a, a very fast pace, as you said, had some disadvantages in that race, um, and should only move forward uh, now in that third start off the layoff. And then uh, I did also make a note about summer pudding. I said, watch the odds on this horse. So if this one gets some play, given that it's, um, you know, been such a, uh, it ran such a disastrous uh, uh, opening start there back in the fall um, on dirt. I think this one has every, every opportunity to uh, show a different, uh, uh, different um, shade when you get into this race. All right. Well, same thoughts there. It makes me feel a little more confident about some of these uh, possible prices in here. And I think that, uh, you know, the favorite, the likely favorite Rosie forecast, clearly the horse to beat, but there's some opportunities in here, but moving along to race number five, we have an allowance optional claiming event for three-year-olds and up going a mile now on the dirt. Um, this is one of the races where I do have a pretty chalky single. I am all in on the number six disco ball, who is seven to two on the morning line. This is the horse that was disqualified and placed second behind the Baffert train Shaz last time out. And there are a lot of disqualifications that I can kind of get on board with and see the perspective of why that happened. Even if I do have, you know, a horse in the race that now I'm not winning my wager based on what happened there, or if I am. Either way, you know, we've been on both sides of DQs. If anybody's played this game for long enough, you have those moments where you're like, yes, and those moments where you're like, ah, oh, come on. <laughs> um, but this one, I didn't really think was that fair. Um, this horse took pace pressure the whole time on the inside. He set pretty legitimate fractions. He was 19 to 1 that day. He did yep. drift a little bit in the stretch, but I don't think Shaz was ever getting by in there. And so... Looking at the rest of the field in here, I appreciate the tenacity and the gameness and the early speed from this horse. And I don't think that he's meeting any major superstars in here. So that's uh, that's where I'm going to be singling. What about you? Yeah, this is my um, the race with the least amount of conviction. It wasn't a very inspiring race for me. It, it's sort of a you know mixed bag in terms of a number could could win this race. Um, I see four left, number three and number six, Disco Ball, going kind of uh, head to head there out on the pace. So um, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the horses that are going to sit just right behind them. That's the five, Mongolian Wind, number eight, uh, Holding the Loot, and number nine, Affable. Um, they'll be all sitting terrific trips, forwardly placed right behind the, uh, the duelers. And that's kind of what we're predicting here is that that pair will duel. 
And I like Mongolian win number five just because of the consistency. Um, Baltus, you know, after the claim, pretty pretty darn good. Uh, holding the loot, nice value at eight to one. Superfecta in each of the last 10 starts. So very consistent, reliable. Not as many wins, though. So a great underplay, perhaps. And then number nine, affable, um, lightly raced. So I kind of like that in these kinds of races. Um, been off since November, working forwardly here. Has every right to improve. Um, it's not that I would leave. You know, so Disco Ball I do have as kind of the B horse um, in this uh, in this race. So I certainly, if you're going to spread at all, um, I would include uh, for all the reasons you stated. Um, but I'm kind of going to just go with the lukewarm uh, conviction on the five, eight and nine here for this leg of the sequence. I like it. And I think you make a great point because if you look beyond disco ball, I think this race does have a lot more openness to it and the opportunity yeah. to find a horse that might provide a little bit more value for you because I think this horse will be a pretty heavy favorite in here. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, moving along to race number six, we have a starter allowance for Phillies and mares. We have three-year-olds and up, and they're going a mile on the turf. What are your thoughts about this race? Yeah, pace fast, but the pressure is going to be kind of light. Uh, number five is the projected pace leader, uh, Gallopy, I think is perhaps the way you pronounce that. Um, and in this case, number four, Froze, who had a really easy trip last time, carved out very slow fractions, and then kind of sprinted away in a perfect trip scenario. Won't get that here, especially if this one is going to be chasing um, Gala V, which, I, which is what we predict. Um, number three, Roses. Crystal will be far, far back in this field. Um, and given that, the, um, the, the, the pace will be pretty quick here. You know, got a shot here for her to uh, kind of close from the clouds and, um, and maybe get up in time. But um, my top pick here is Scott sky on ice or is it ski on ice it's like a sky on ice right um she, she exits uh the same race as number seven agreed to disagree and the number eight horse um she dueled with the seven in that race uh i think really needed it though off the layoff um and really held her own there just finished a little over a length behind number seven agreed to disagree who's going to go off at lower odds in this race um if you look at her form cycle from last june through december she moved forward in every one of those starts. Then she's had the layoff, came back, uh, ran a very good race. Um, love when they, you know, kind of cut those fast fractions, fade. Um, usually in that next start, that second start, they'll resume that ascension in their form cycle uh, progression. And I think this one has every right to improve and kind of a uh, little uh, turn the tables on number seven, agree to disagree. But I am going to include number seven, agree to disagree, uh, in the pick six, uh, just for the fact that it was a really sharp race last out. There were no faults. The horse will not be on the lead here, be taken back uh, a few lengths off the pace. She brings a lot of balance to a race. She'll have a sustained bid to the wire. Uh, no superfecta misses in the last five races. So again, a model of consistency. And uh, the way this race is setting up, especially if she's taken off that uh, fast pace a bit. Um, I think she's got every chance to improve as well. Absolutely. And I think you bring up a great point because those are two horses that I looked at sky on ice and agree to disagree. And I looked at their last race and I was like, okay, well I see them like going at each other and this is setting up that perfect stocking trip for the winner or uh, the second place finisher in that race. Um, the two in here, Jimmy smoked carrot, who's six to one on the morning line. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that horse got a perfect trip last time out. But I also think that that horse might get a perfect trip this time. <laughs> this time. She has the same, or she has the same um, pace setters in front of her. And, you know, the showing early interest, but also being able to sit off of horses, I think that she could possibly benefit from the same type of setup. And, Sky on Ice and Agree to Disagree have every right to improve, just like you mentioned, especially Sky on Ice. But I think that it's setting up the same type of dynamics for a stalker or someone who's going to sit right off the pace. And I also did really like the five Gallivy because she is getting back to routing after three starts at sprint distances. Um, it has been a long time since she has gone a round of ground on the grass. You have to go all the way back to November 27th of 2020 for right. when she was running over six and a half furlongs. However, that was a win at Del Mar and that was an 85 buyer speed figure for that effort. 
Um, form's a little questionable. She did only race twice in 2021, and then she does come back off of a lengthy 11-month layoff. But that stumble last time when she was returning off of that layoff, that was pretty significant. She fell right to her knees. And so I think that I can forgive that effort, just get rid of that one, cross it off, and now maybe getting back to what is her ultimate preferred distance. I think she's got a decent shot in here. So I just went five, two in here because I felt like other horses were going to take a significant amount of money. Um, and then I thought that these two might get the right kind of setup in here. It could be, it's going to be interesting to see how uh, the jockeys, this could be a, a great jockey race to see how they uh, treat their charges here. Um, I, I, I'm just curious as to, uh, what's going to happen with the one and the seven horse here if they truly do take off the pace? Because I think that'll be the key. If they're involved up front with Gallaby, I think uh, I think you're right. Then it, the advantage goes to the number two horse. Absolutely. And I think what's great about Santa Anita is that you can rely on these jockeys to actually send with speed horses and create <laughs> right? fast paces, whereas on a lot of other surfaces, you're not seeing that happen like Gulfstream, especially all the Naira tracks. It's like, come on, just like send your speed. <laughs> yeah. okay. <laughs> right. Um, so at least we do have that as the possibility uh, on the turf at Santa Anita. But moving along to race number seven, an allowance optional claiming event for three year olds and up going a mile. Now we're back on the dirt. Um, this is another race where I was a little shocking here. There's two horses that are coming off of layoffs in the number five. There goes Harvard as well as the number nine, Dance Some Mo. Um, the five, there goes Harvard is seven to two on the morning, morning line and comes out of the Ellis Park Derby, finishing second behind Superstock. Um, trainer Michael McCarthy is 17% off 180 day plus layoffs. So it's not like he can't get horses ready to run coming off a bit of a break. The questions about this horse, he has yet to win on the dirt. But if you look at his past attempts on the dirt, he's hit the board in almost all of them. And the only time he didn't was when he lost the rider, when Tyler Gaffleon was riding. Right. Just get rid of that run. And he's finished behind decent horses. Law Professor has turned out to be a really decent horse. He finished second behind Express Train last time um, he was on the dirt. And then his last turf ever was kind of, you know, eh, but his dirt efforts of late have been really, really decent. Um, he finished second to he finished behind Bezos. There's a lot of really decent horses in his form in the past. So I think that he certainly handles the dirt and he's not meeting any significant superstars in here. And then for the number nine dance, Samo five to two on the morning line, coming in from Woodbine, changing trainers from Grand Motion to uh, Phil D'Amato. The dirt is also a question with him. He's tried the synthetic. Um, he's tried all three surfaces, in fact, but this is not the queen's plate. So I think that right. he's significant class relief in here yep yeah um boy i thought this at this in this six um race sequence i thought this was the toughest race i think it's wide open i think it's shouting upset i think if you're trying to um um kind of be a contrarian here this might be one of the races to do it because there are a lot of question marks as you had raised um with a lot of the horses who are going to go off as the favorites and I love trying to beat question marks. And in this race, I'm going to try to beat the question marks with number seven, Motown Music, um, who should go off at some handy double-digit odds. Uh, this is a Mark Glatt charge, five-year-old. Uh, it'll be taken well off the pace here. Not the best place to be on the Santa Anita dirt right now. Um, but given the way this pace projects, it's going to be super fast, uh, at least from my estimation. A ton of pressure. There could be about seven horses all running within two lengths of one another um, for the majority of this race. Um, back, the ring luck and um, Parnelli will be those two that will be out front dueling, but there will be a good four or five pressers um, right on them. So this horse will be taken back, number seven, Motown Music, uh, and relaxed well off that pace. Um, this is a uh, third start off a 10 month layoff for this horse. So I like where that fits in a, in a form cycle progression uh, prediction. Um, should be about a four or five point move forward uh, as a result here. Kind of a tough trip last out. Um, had to slam on the brakes in the stretch run. So um, you kind of have to look at that figure as being a little bit understated as a result. Uh, blinkers come back on and I could see why after watching the replay, the horse kind it, has got talent and certainly did have plenty of energy at the end of the race, but kinds of waits on horses and tends to shuffle himself back 
So um, I think the blinkers are going to be a really nice added plus here to uh, add more conviction to this pick. Has some good late foot. Won't be that far back, maybe five lengths as they uh, turn for home. So it's going to have to have some giddy up here down the stretch. But the way this pace is setting up, the field will come back to this horse. Um, and I, and that's why I like this one so much. My second pick was uh, There Goes Harvard uh, for all the reasons you stated. So um, I certainly can uh, complain to that horse. I do like the number one back uh, ring luck a bit. Just don't like the setup uh, on the inside speed. A lot of dueling, a lot of pace here. I think the other kind of long shot here that I like is number four, Prince Major. I do like that um, move uh, that the barn is making here. Nine furlongs on the turf last out. First off of a layoff. Um, is turning back now, not only in distance, but going back to the dirt. Uh, very tactical. Should set a really good trip here, too. A little closer to the pace than Motown music, but not involved in the heat. And uh, I think this one could also surprise it as a, at a big price. So if I'm spreading anywhere in this sequence, it's going to be in this race. I like it. I feel like every race that we've gone through so far is like where I'm picking the chog, you're finding a prize, and where you're going with a little bit more of a favorite, I'm finding a prize. So I think that we're uh, kind of evening each other out as far as exactly. finding value for everybody. So another place where I am not finding any value um, is race number eight. That is the Irish O'Brien Stakes, kind of fitting for the St. Patrick's Day weekend. Uh, California bred or sired, fillies and mares, four-year-olds and up on the downhill turf now, at six and a half furlongs. And who do you like in here? Yeah, hillside turf. So I think we have to always remind folks that um, typically being on the inside on that configuration is not the place to be. And of course, um, if you look at sort of the stats of the races that have been run this year, and it's pretty typical every year, you're best to be off the pace rather than on the lead um, when you're going um, this configuration. However, the asterisk here is uh, when the field is uh, a little bit more compact, you can kind of throw a lot of that away. <laughs> so in this case, um, you know, we don't have to be too concerned that the odds on favorite, uh, number two, Becca Taylor, the undefeated six for six horse who's got so much versatility, Dirt, turf, uh, tapita, five and a half furlongs, six, six and a half furlongs. Um, you know, look, you know, odds on is going to be a single on so many tickets. Um, in playing the pick six, I will definitely include her. But being the contrarian that I like to be, uh, this is the first time she'll be on this configuration. And for horses who have not been on it before, uh, they can get a little freaked out um, on some of the the way those turns happen, the dirt hits, etc. So. It's not a, um, a certainty that this horse wins. And if I had to pick someone to go contrarian with here, it's the number six, Eddie's New Dream. Um, for the reason that this one has scored last out, lifetime best on this uh, hillside turf course against actually a tougher field, maybe with the exception of number two here, um, but ran very evenly in that race. But what I liked most about it, and we talk about this often in the super screener, is that this one laid out very elevated pace and uh, pace figures throughout the race. So 90 plus brisk pace um, and late pace speed ratings. And um, she predicts here on coming off the layoff to either match that last out or maybe just a couple of points below, but that would be good enough to win this race if um, Becca Taylor doesn't freak here and continues her form cycle progression. So I'm probably uh, gonna defeat myself by going against Becca here, but um, if I had to uh, pick a horse that would burn up a lot of tickets uh, because they didn't have it, it would be number six, Eddie's New Dream. Right, and I think a big favorite like this in here, I don't blame anybody for taking a shot against. When you think of the sequence as a whole, you know that a lot of people are going to single here. You know that if you can beat this favorite, you are going to end up being live to that much of a bigger score, much more potential for a decent payout, depending on what happens in the other legs. But I, I couldn't fault this horse. You know, like she's undefeated in <laughs> yeah. six races, all three surfaces. She has tactical speed. She doesn't need the lead, but she can sit up close or she can take the lead if necessary. All sorts of different jockeys. Now, Flavian Pratt rides again. Who better than Flavian Pratt on the turf at Santa Anita? You know, I I think that if you want to find a fault with her, you can say that some of her buyer speed figures on the turf are a little bit less than some of the others in this field. But I also think that she's kind of improving in general since the last time that she was on the turf. So perhaps she has the ability to kind of run to her competition and defeat them. And I think that, like you said, if you're looking for somebody else, 
you can find them. But also, if you're going to try to be all that creative and do the contrary, and like you say, find somebody else, are you bold enough to not use this horse? And you and right. I both are not. So I think that if I was going to look anywhere else, it would kind of be a little bit of the five sensible cat who does have some better turf figures um, than Becca Taylor. But I'd be kind of inclined to single Becca Taylor in here just because like, I think she is the most likely winner. Um, that brings my payday down significantly, but it also would double my ticket if I didn't just do that. So it's a kind of a decision that I might wait until the absolute last minute to fully commit to, but that's kind of like where, I, what I'm inclined to do. So it's tough when you have such a heavy favorite in mandatory payout sequences like this, because it's like, you know, like, Oh, this is the decision. Like, this is the moment where, you know, you have to decide, like, do I just go for it and single in here or do I try to beat this horse and then end up spending that much more on my ticket? So it's kind of the dilemma that we all face, but exactly. moving on to the last leg in here, um, starter allowance company, four-year-olds and up going a mile now on the regular turf course. What are your thoughts about this race? Uh, they closed with a great exciting one here because uh, I believe you probably have to go about six deep in this uh, field to catch the winner. It's wide open. They typically are with these, you know, um, allowance non-winner events on the turf. This is where you're going to find, if you look at the um, when the percentage of favorites, it's usually pretty low in these types of races. So this is a, definitely one where you want to take a shot at, against some of the favorites um, in this race. Um, regardless, you're going to have to go deep, I think, to catch the winner here. Um, that being said, I landed on my top pick as not being such a long shot, and that is number five, Exaltation. And I love pattern horses. And let's talk about the pattern that we're going to see here. First, let's talk about the fact that this one is going to face a lot easier um, than what this one took on in the last couple of races. Uh, has a real pace advantage here. For, funny, for a race where there's 12 horses that have signed on, there's not a lot of pace. Uh, number five is uh, going to be certainly be advantaged from that uh, post position. Number 12, Keystone Field would be the other legitimate speed in here. But, you know, going to have to chase from that outside post, use up some energy uh, to kind of hook up then with number five as they hit the turn. So, um, but they can kind of then you know, pull the field back a bit through uh, modest fractions over the, through the backstretch. So I think they take a breather there. And this one, I think, will have the greatest advantage. Third off the layoff, um, you know, really is um, incredibly consistent too. Um, when you think about, you know, six starts, all finishing in the exacta in 2021, that's pretty impressive. Five for 10 of those exactas came here on the Santa Anita turf, primarily sprinting, but note that pattern last time. Um, it was essentially two sprints following a layoff um, and then stretching out to a mile and then through a DQ uh, actually got the win. So a lot of I think players will dismiss this horse thinking, well, it's a sprinter. Um, but I think this horse is just as good, especially when you're looking at six and a half furlongs. That kind of runs like a mile uh, when you're on the downhill turf course. So um, I think this horse uh, is falling right into this great pattern, has the pace advantage, form cycle advantage. Um, I have others here uh, that are interesting. My top long shot pick in the race is number six on a, uh, a spree. Should go off at about 20 to one. Um, this Brit Brittany Vandenberg, while she's only one for 23, those seven horses that finished second, I mean, a head bob or, you know, a little bit of different outcome at the wire, she could have a very different record. Um, her horses are always running very well here uh, for someone who's coming in from the east and taking on uh, the West Coast competition. And what I like about this horse is um, should sit an excellent trip, has a wonderful turn of foot. Um, and seems to be coming into a really good part of the uh, form cycle progression right now and projects to really uh, knock a, a, a new lifetime top in this race and certainly will be completely dismissed at odds of 20 to 1. So if I had to just go with two, it would be those two. But again, um, I think you have to go deeper than that to catch this one. I agree. This is my major spread race. I have the two, the five, the eight, the 11, and the 12 in here. Um, Everything you said about the five really speaks to me. And I really like this horse stretching out after the two, six and a half yeah. for a long attempts. I think that this horse might be better at a route of ground. Um, and like Great. you mentioned, the qualification. Um, uh, a couple of other things that I like, I like in the two, the fly the sky, who's eight to one on the morning line. 
This horse comes in off a win with a career best uh, buyer speed figure of 86 at the mile and the eighth. So cutting back a little bit in distance. Um, I like for the number eight, the figures fit, even though this horse is stepping up in class, it's figures fit with this group at eight to one on the morning line for move over. The 11 frontier market, five to one on the morning line is uh, stretching out and second off a layoff. And then, as you said, uh, with the Keystone field, uh, seven to two on the morning line, um, not going to get the best uh, shake of things from the outside draw, but I think it didn't have the best of trips behind Fly the Sky last time out, so it has every reason to improve if uh, this horse can overcome that outside post. But I totally agree. This is the race where it's like anybody could really kind of step up and show up here. Um, I think we kind of touched on the horses that are most likely winners, but um, I think this could be uh, this could be an all for some people. I don't love pressing that all button, but I think this last leg it could be um, wide open. So. I think this is a pretty interesting sequence. It's uh, you have some chalky horses, you have some wide open races, and I think there's just so much opportunity within this sequence. And if you have strong opinions, boy, this is the uh, the uh, the sequence to prove it. Um, because, uh, like you said, in this race, we could have asked a ton of other people <laughs> who their uh, top three picks were, and I, I bet you that lineup would look very different across every individual. So that's uh, what a great way to wrap up the uh, pick six. Should be very exciting. Absolutely. And I'm going to show the ticket that you created for our Rainbow Six in general. Uh, you have the five and the eight in leg one, going five, eight, nine in leg two. Uh, in leg three, you have one, seven, leg four, one, four, five, seven, the fifth leg of the two and the six, and then to close it out, three, five, six, and 11 for the Rainbow Six mandatory payout. And when you play tickets, are you kind of that person that also plays multiple tickets? You kind of do the A's, the B's, the C's. Or are you more of a Cape Man style? No, I'd like to play. I'd like to play multiple tickets. So one of the strategies, you know, um, that kind of was inferred here as we were going through the sequence. Um, what I like to do is turn the pick six into a pick four. So what I'll do is um, I'll take sort of a, you know, in races where you really can get it down to one or two horses. <clears throat> and I'll um, kind of rotate the singles. So we talked about Becca Taylor as a, as a two horse. Well, I'll take her uh, it, it, literally as, as a single in that leg of the uh, pick six, but there's probably two other races, like the first race we had here um, in, the, in the fourth race, number five horse. So you put five and the two together. Now I can spread a little bit more in some of these races that probably require it. And then I might move to another race um, where I, I think I had the one and the seven uh, as my top two, but I'll pick one of those horses and again, pair it with the two and turn these in a lot of pick, uh, turn these pick sixes into pick four tickets. And then the other way I'll go too is I'll say, okay, who are my, you know, two best long shots in this sequence and start using them literally as singles so that uh, then um, if I'm right, um, I can have some pretty skinny tickets uh, as a result. So that's kind of how I build these tickets. I love it. Awesome strategy. And I uh, just want to say thank you so much again for joining me. Uh, Super Screener available at picks.horseracingnation.com along with all of our other pro reports. Lots of valuable information in there. Uh, plenty of live long shots and other horses that are likely to uh, get some value for you. So um, thank you again for coming on, and it was a pleasure to meet you over the uh, internet. <laughs> and um, Mike Shetty, everybody. Yeah, it was great fun. Thank you so much, Sarah, and uh, good luck to you, and go fast and win. Absolutely. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.